So now that we have our title and subtitle working, let's move on to the button and background image. To do this, we're going to be adding two new fields to our field group. The first one being the button. And this one's going to be using the link field type. Make sure that the return value is link array and not link URL. And let's also add the background image. The field type this one's going to use is image. And down here, let's also make sure that this is using the image array. The preview size, let's actually bump that up a little bit. Let's make it large. This is going to be a larger image. This won't dictate how big uh, the image is output onto the site, just in our editing experience. So let's collapse that and hit update. If we go back over to our edit page, we now have two new buttons. One select is select link and the other one is add image. Let's work on the button first. And let's just go to google.com and this button's text will be go to Google. Let's also make sure that it opens up in a new tab. And now that we've done that, we get this little dialog down here showing us what our link looks like. Once we hit update, Let's go to our code and let's actually take a look at what that field gives us. Oh, we named it button, didn't we? So this is what that link field type, if you select the link array, that's what it will return to us. It'll give us the title, the URL, and the target. So whether or not it opens up in a new tab. And let's actually start implementing this. So we have this anchor down here that we want to put that information into. Let's drop everything down onto a new line here. So let's get our button and that should have oops our button and since it returns an array we can do this and get our URL out of there so we're echoing out our URL let's echo out our title and as well as our target let's make sure that's in the correct spot so we've got our link our target and the text that it should display in our button let's go back and double check let's make sure we don't leave this in there All right, so now we've got our button and it should open up in a new tab to Google, which it did. Awesome. It's exactly what we wanted. So the link at, uh, the link field is really handy. Um, I use it so often uh, because it's just a really good way to allow the user to, you know, make sure that they can open things in new tabs. You can even search for pages within your site and have it link directly to that page without you having to do any sort of code pushes or anything like that. The open up it in a new tab is great when they're linking to third party sites and things like that. So really handy little piece of, uh, of technology there. So next up we have the background image. This is gonna be using the image field type. So let's quickly go back to our homepage. Let's comment that out. So we have this background image. Let's get rid of it. That is being held inside of our CSS. So if we go to our front page template, we can comment that out. 
and we should just see a big old gray background, okay? Now, we our goal here is to allow the user to update this background image um, with whatever that they want. So this image field is perfect for that. We can just go into our media library, pick the image that we want to display there, and then hit select down at the bottom right. And we get this nice big preview of what it'll look like. Hit update. And let's go back to our template and let's see what the image one gives us. So we refresh this page. It gives us a lot more than the link did. And for good reason, there's a lot more information here that we care about. Um, you can get everything from the image ID to the title, all this kind of stuff. Um, the width and height and all the different sizes that WordPress has cropped that image to. Now, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to want to use this sizes um, array because you never know what's coming through that image upload. You know, I've seen times where people upload images that are, you know, 10 megabytes. So rather than just saying, just give me the full size image, you'll tend to want to grab a cropped version of that image that fits the area that that image belongs in. However, in this case, I've got a perfectly cropped image all ready to go. So we will just be using this, um, the full URL for that image. So let's go back to our code and comment this out so we don't get that screen again. And we are gonna want that image to be placed here in this um, header. So we want style equals background image. And then we're gonna to wanna to open up some PHP tags. Get field and image. It's going to be the URL. Let's drop this down to its own line so we can kind of see it a little bit better. So what that should do is that get field will give us that array and then we want the URL out of that array. Let's go back and refresh and we have our image back. If we open up our inspector, you can see right here that that is what is, is being output into our HTML, that background.png. So you can swap this out for anything that you want. And I mean, technically, if we were to get rid of this and pick something else, it would upload and we would have a new image there. That's not something that we would have to manage anymore. That's takes one more thing off of our plates. So um, in this tutorial, I showed you how to do the link field type as well as the image field type. Um, in the next one, I'm really excited about because we have these repeating columns here. Who's to say that they want exactly four? They could want eight, they could want six, and that's not something that we want to have to upload every single time that they that that needs to change. So the point of the next one is to show you how to do repeatable fields, groups of fields that um, are repeated over and over again. And in that we'll have, you know, an image upload, a title and some text and all that kind of stuff. So very excited about the next one. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and you know, we'll work through it together.